They call me Squirrel. What's going on, Squirrel Squad? It is your boy, the Squirrel, for the second half, or maybe the first half if the other one got blocked, or maybe they both got blocked. Maybe, who knows? Why do I explain this stuff? If you see, see it, if you don't see it, then you never even knew I talked about it. But this is Mitchell and Webb American Idol contestant interview. Um, I think uh, Think Hard and Be Kind sent this one over, along with the uh, Nee Reality one, which is supposed to be the first one that came out today. Over on the Discord server, I thought, man, why not rip out a Mitchell and Webb Monday? Ain't done that in a long time. So here we go. We're on part two of Mitchell and Webb Monday. What a treat. It's Memorial Day here in the United States, and uh, hopefully I've got enough things recorded for the next couple of days because I don't want to work on Memorial Day. I want to sit back and think about um, my family who has served in the U.S. military Uh, Think about all the men and women who have given their lives for our freedom. And uh, that's what it's about today. It's about remembering uh, all the folks that that put their life on the line to make sure that we uh, we stay free. So uh, Remembrance Day, Memorial Day is different everywhere. It's called something different. But I think to all of us, we all have a day when we remember... um, the uh, the folks that uh, that gave up the ultimate sacrifice. So happy Memorial Day to my American uh, viewers out there, and uh, let's get into this here. Mitchell and Webb, American Idol contestant interview. This is uh, Mitchell Webb Part Two, Part Two for the day. All right, let's do it. Here we go. So Felicity, how'd it go? Uh, well, Ian, I went in there, um, put my heart and soul into it, really gave it my heart and soul, and at the end of the day, speaking from my heart and soul, that's really all I could have done. <laughs> They're all about the heart and soul on the idol, I'll tell you that right now. Is it, though? What? <laughs> Putting your heart and soul into it, is that really all you could have done? What about practising? Or learning the words? or trying to stay in tune. Aren't all those things quite important? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, Ian, I went in there today, put my heart and soul on the line, really gave it my heart and soul, and at the end of the day, coming right from my heart and soul now, there's really nothing else I could have done. (laughs) Yeah, but technically there is, though. What? Well, you know, you could have got up early and rehearsed. You could have dressed like a proper singer instead of getting trussed up in leather like some Tory MP two seconds before a fatal wanking accident. <laughs> you could have picked a funky modern... <laughs> now I'm trying to envision what a fatal wanking incident would be. Oh, man. ...tune instead of that sort of depressing Mariah Carey thing that sounded like something a taxi driver would listen to whilst burning photo albums in a lay-by. <laughs> or you could have worked on your vocal technique, which, to be honest, was a bit hoarse and shouty. I don't mean to be rude, but you put me in mind of a dog trying to bark the alphabet. Is any of this helping? <laughs> but I put my heart and soul into that performance. Yeah, but in the real world, that's not really good enough. Which, if you think about it, Felicity, is probably why you're still living with your gran and working in that biro factory. (laughs) In real life, as opposed to the happy, clappy, rainbow fantasy world that you see fit to fly through on your winged unicorn of delusion, (laughs) sincerity is no excuse for failure. You don't see pilots saying, sorry I killed 300 people and sheared the roof off that church, I guess I was giving it too much heart and soul. Kids are watching this. Kids, yeah, brilliant, because of course, having children is sort of like a way of achieving something without needing any talent. <laughs> Brutal. But so, I mean, you know, if you're looking at brutal honesty, he's nailing it. It's still rough to hear, though. Which, if you think about it, is a metaphor for your whole life. You, you're a horrible presenter. Actually, Felicity, I'm not a presenter at all. I just come here on my lunch break and do this for fun. Tiss you. <laughs> she kind of looks like our guy over here that does the presenting for those shows. Uh, Ryan Seacrest looks a little bit like him. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny because I'm all about uh, talking and, and having a real conversation with people about false positivity in this world. I'll give you an example. I understand, before you think I'm a cold-hearted idiot, I understand trying to lift people up and trying to make people feel better. I'm not about stomping people when they're down. But, like, think about Facebook. Think about the last time you were on Facebook. And, like, five people in a row, like, oh, man, my dog died. I don't know what to do. My family's torn apart. The next guy's like, man... You know, I'm having a hard time at work. 
boss just cut my hours. Don't know how I'm going to feed the family and pay the bills. You know, oh, I just found out that I've got diagnosed with a very really rare disease and I'm going to be paying the rest of my life. And, you know, or, oh, I'm the, you know, I'm a single mom. I'm raising 23 kids, you know, and it's the same. The reason why I give you all these different examples, because it doesn't matter what your problem is that you have. Almost immediately, as soon as you post it, someone's going to jump on and be like, you got this. This has become, you got this. These three words have become the answer to everyone when they don't know what to say to someone. Someone's got a problem. You got this. No, I got 23 kids and I'm a single mom. I don't got this. That's why I came to Facebook and said something, hoping somebody would reach out and be like, yo, let me drop you a $50 gift card to the grocery store to help feed these kids. Instead, you just tell me, you got this? No, if I had this, I wouldn't be complaining about it. It's false positivity, folks. There's a lot of it in this world. People are just like, they feel like they're lifting people up and doing better. But at the end of the day, you're not helping anybody. And that's kind of the way these presenters always act with all these contestants. And this kind of gives us a little bit of the other side of it. So it's nice to be kind to people. It's great. All absolutely great to be good to people, especially like to be giving and be kind. I love all that. But to lift people up, just to tell them that they can handle this themselves doesn't really do a lot for a lot of people. Then again, if someone doesn't feel like they can ever do for themselves, maybe that's what they need is just to, you got this. Anyways, I got to go. I got to get out of here. It's two Mitchell and Webbs. It's a little, little crazy for a Monday, isn't it? It's nuts. You guys be good, all right? Take care of yourselves. You got this. Scroll up.